Hey there, welcome to Red's Road to Nationals, a series where I cover what I'm doing to get ready to shoot the 2020 USPSA Factory Nationals. I'll talk about training, mental prep, gear, and other floppy hat related topics. Nothing fancy, just a regular guy headed to participate in the highest level of competition USPSA has to offer. This week, all of the guns and stuff. Oh yeah. I've been at the shooting thing a while, and one lesson I learned really early on was always have a backup gun. It seemed like good advice, but at the time, it also seemed kind of ridiculous to spend money on a second gun that was identical to the one that I already had. Guns. Lots of guns. Then I learned later on that the pros have guns for practice. I mean, just for practice? Talk about flexing on the pores. I mean, for the, for the guns? Really? Basically, both pieces of advice were aimed at the idea of having a second gun. Eventually I came around to the idea and uh, I ended up getting a second gun, but not for the reasons you think. But, you know, I don't want to keep you waiting in anticipation. There it is. And that's my match gun. And yeah, that's also my practice gun. I, I don't keep a second gun for USPSA gun games. This is it. So, Glock 34, there it is. Um, honestly, you know, Aside from the perfection that Glock purports to have, um, they are relatively easy to fix if something does break, and uh, parts are plentiful. So for the most part, I generally don't worry about the gun going down in a match with something that I can't use to fix it. Let's say I had a second gun. And there it is. Obviously another Glock 34. However, this one is set up for and here it comes, IDPA. Now hang on, before you lynch me for being a FUD, I did start out shooting IDPA, and uh, especially locally, I very much enjoy the clubs that I shoot around here. There's good folks. So I have a good time with those matches. I'm trying not to worry too much about the goofy ass rules. Now here are some hard facts. If you're shooting a major, and uh, you have a failure that requires you to go to a backup gun. The reality is that your match is pretty much over. It's not going to get any better from here. If uh, you uh, manage to get the gun up and running, at least you can keep shooting. Especially in a major match. You spent time for travel, hotel stays. Uh, you know, usually majors are over the course of two days. So having a backup makes sense. The advantage I have is that I can buy hold onto a bag of parts, or I can even scavenge off this. So when I do travel to majors, this goes with me. The reality is, even if I blew up the gun, I could switch over to this one, take the mag wall off, and go right back to work. So I have enough that it does make sense at a major that I will carry a second gun. I do understand when you have guns like 2011s or 75 series CZs or uh, type Foglios that Wear and tear is an issue that uh, you may have to worry about having a spare gun. If that's the case, you know, you'll have to do your uh, research, get informed, and get to... Wait, no, that's the wrong YouTube channel. Uh, but figure it out for yourself. If you're not running something that's, you know, a plastic wounder gun like I've got, then it may take some research to decide that it may be worth having a second gun. It's now 83 days to USBSA Nationals. Practice has been going really well. Let me know if you have any topics you want me to cover by leaving a comment below or reaching out to me on Instagram at Reds. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That way you can easily see when I drop the next video. Next week, getting grippy with it. I'm going to talk about how I grip a gun. Honestly, kind of fun to shoot. <laughs>